Hey there, I'm Mr. Bizet, and this is the next um, installment in the Body Systems topic. Now, this one's kind of not super, super, super relevant to Body Systems, but it still is, because we're still talking about things that make us who we are. And what we're going to do today is talk about photosynthesis and respiration. Now, these two things are really important for us to be able to survive. So it's really important that we are able to understand what they both are and understand why they're important, if you know what I mean. Um, thank you for everyone that's been watching these videos. I've been having a hoop making them. I've got a big fan club now. It's great. I'm loving it. Okay, let's get into it. If I can get it to work. There we go. All right, so our learning intentions for today are to be able to identify the materials required by multicellular organisms for the processes of respiration and photosynthesis. So we want to be able to identify what's required for these things to be able to work. I've got some key terms there. Um, I'll let you look at those in your own leisure, but we will be talking about all of these to some degree. To some degree. We're not going to talk about all of them. I think I've left out chlorophyll, but everything else we kind of talk about a little bit. Um, in particular, the plant stuff. Later in the year, we'll talk more about the plant stuff. What we really want to try and focus on today is just photosynthesis and respiration. We'll be talking about the things specific to that. So before we get started, just a really, really quick lesson on chemical reactions and how we write chemical reactions. So the first thing we need to keep in mind is that there's two main parts of a chemical reaction. There are reactants and there are products. So the reactants are the two things that we are reacting together. So I've put an example there of bicarb soda and vinegar, which is acetic acid. Um, that's just an example. I feel like everyone here would have done that before. You've probably done it in primary school. You might have even done it at school to some degree when we did like little volcanoes or something like that. Bicarb soda and vinegar is something that we've done a fair bit. Those two things, we put them together and what happens? Now, you can't actually tell me what happens, but it bubbles up, doesn't it? So the products that are produced from that specific reaction are carbon dioxide, water, and a thing called sodium acetate. But we're not going to focus too much on that big word because it's not that important for what we need to know. It's just that we have reactants and we have products. So the products are the things that are produced from a reaction. So reactant, other things reacting, product, other things produced. How do we write them? So when we write them, we write reactants, we write whatever the reactants are, with plus signs if there's more than one. And I guess it would have to be, there'd have to be more than one reactant. Oh, actually, no, there doesn't have to, there have, there doesn't have to be there, don't worry. If we put a plus sign if there's more than one. So we have reactants and we have products. So for example, I've, I've done the bicarb soda and vinegar one there. So the bicarb soda and the vinegar, there are reactants. We have a little arrow and it says carbon dioxide, water and sodium acetate as our products. Okay, so we have reactants on the left, products on the right with a arrow separating them. All right, you guys would have seen this before. In year seven, you would have seen what a cell is. Maybe you even made a cell. You might have made a cell model in a shoebox, for example. Some of you would have done that. I do remember a lot of you actually doing that. But just in case, this is a cross-section of an animal cell. And the things that we're really going to try and focus on today are these boys right here. These things are called mitochondria. Now, these are the these are the sites of cellular respiration. We're not going to focus on the rest here. Like, the rest of this stuff is important, but today we're just going to focus on what the mitochondria do and basically why the mitochondria are really important. So, what is respiration? I'm, oh, that's got rid of it. Cool. What is respiration? So... Respiration, or aerobic respiration, as we will call it, is the scientific name more, a little bit more. It's the process that animals use to produce energy. Okay, so we're not talking about plants here. We're talking about animals. We take oxygen. So we breathe in and we go... We breathe in that oxygen that's in the air. And, we take, and we're taking glucose. So we're taking glucose from our food... And we have them react together in what we call a pseudo-combustion reaction. 
to produce carbon dioxide and water. So what do I mean by pseudo combustion? So pseudo kind of means alike. So if I was being a pseudo tree, it might mean that I'm putting my arms out wide and I'm trying to be like a tree. So if I'm trying to be like a combustion reaction, imagine that we're talking about a fire. So we're trying to be like a fire. So in our cells, this pseudo combustion thing happens. And from that, we have some energy tip being produced. So just like when we create a fire out in the backyard, maybe we're having a fire pit or something like that, we're having a good old time, that fire is producing energy, which is then being put onto us to keep us warm, especially now in these colder months. Um, similar sort of things happening here. That energy is being produced and we can actually use that energy to do things in our body like moving and like maintaining our cells and doing all that sort of stuff. So it happens in the mitochondria of our cells. Next thing to know. I've put down the bottom there, the chemical reaction. And this tells us the products, oh, sorry, the reactants and the products. So the reactants are on the left, products are on the right. Oxygen and glucose are our reactants and carbon dioxide and water are our products. Now, the other little thing here that we, don't necessarily always put in a chemical reaction formula. I've put it here as well. We have this energy being produced. So that's that energy we were talking about from that pseudo combustion reaction. Where do we get the two components from? So oxygen, I've talked about this just before, but oxygen, it's in the air we breathe. And the chemical formula for oxygen that we breathe in is O2. So there's two oxygens combined together. And then glucose, it's in the food that we eat. So we produce glucose by breaking down carbohydrates. If you look on the back of a chip packet, it'll say the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Now, we break down those carbohydrates in our stomach to produce glucose, and the glucose gets transported to our cells to be able to do respiration. I've put the chemical formula for glucose there because I kind of like it. It's a nice, easy one to remember. Now, you might be looking at that and being like, Sir, I don't get that. That doesn't make any sense to me. Let's have a think back to when we did our periodic table subject and we went through and we have this thing. Now what what do you can you remember what C was? And it actually kind of it kind of tells you what it is here. So C is carbon, H is hydrogen, and O is oxygen. Just like there. It's just a different it's a different sort of form of it. But we have six carbons, we have 12 hydrogens, we have six oxygens, and they're all sort of joined together in a molecule. All right, moving on to the plants. So again, we have a plant cell here. Now you guys would have looked at this in year seven as well, but the thing we're gonna focus on today is this thing right here, the chloroplasts. So the chloroplast is where the um, it's, it's a site of respira uh, sorry, not respiration, photosynthesis. So we're going to focus on this. Again, all this stuff, really good. We're just focusing on this today. And you might even notice there that they have a little mitochondria as, as there as well. So what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process by which plants take energy from the sun to produce glucose and oxygen from the sun. Probably shouldn't have that second from the sun, but that doesn't matter. Um, they take energy from the sun they take water and carbon dioxide to produce glucose and oxygen. It happens in the chloroplast. So let's have a look at this chemical reaction. Just like our other one before, we have carbon dioxide and water. They're our reactants. We have oxygen and glucose being produced. They're our products. And just like the other one, we've taken in energy from the sun to be able to make this happen. Now, there's a there's a bigger reason why this is the case. And as you get on to higher levels of science, you'll begin to understand that because it has to do with the bonds between the cells being, well, they sort of need energy to be able to be made. And again, higher levels of science, this will become more apparent. But all we need to know is that we have carbon dioxide and water. We take energy from the sun and we produce oxygen and glucose. 
where do the two components come from? Kind of easy, kind of simple. I didn't put the chemical formulas in here. But I probably should have, but, you know, we all make mistakes. Um, carbon dioxide, so CO2. It's a product of respiration, and it's also a product of combustion. So CO2, you guys probably know about greenhouse gases and how when we use our cars and that sort of stuff, we create, we, we do combustion reaction and we produce carbon dioxide, which is why it's so, it, it can be damaging to the environment to be, be doing that, frankly. Um, the other part is water. So we get water from our environment. Um, it's also a product of respiration and combustion. Can you see where we're going to get at with this? Before we get into that really quickly, how does carbon dioxide get into and out of the plant? So at the start there, there was a key term called the stoma or the stomata or the stomates. This is what we're looking at here. Now we have our leaf. Later on in the year, you'll, you'll more than likely do an experiment where you take a little cross section of a leaf like here and you identify these little stoma or these little stomata. stomata. Um, basically, carbon dioxide gets into the plant through these little stomates. Now, if you have a look at what they look like, they look like little mouths. So just like humans, they have these little tiny mouths on their leaves and they breathe in the carbon dioxide and they'll breathe out the oxygen and the, heart, the, the water. Sorry. And they kind of look like this. So there's a mechanism behind this, but we won't get too, bu too much into this. Um, they just kind of look like little mouths and the little mouths on the plant. And you'll get to do this at, at late, later on in the year. It's really, really cool. What we were getting at is that they work in a cycle. So the products from respiration, so these products from respiration are the reactants for photosynthesis. The products from Resp oh, sorry, the products from photosynthesis are the reactants for respiration. So it just goes in this cycle. So humans are doing this part. Oops. Humans are doing this part. Plants are doing this part. If we can manage to keep this cycle in, balanced, in balance, that's a really, really good thing. So they work in a cycle. That's the big takeaway from this. We have these things working at the same time and they work in a cycle and ideally we'd keep them balanced but sometimes the balance shifts um a really really quick side note what is the energy we keep talking about um in respiration we use the glucose to create a molecule called atp now this this now when i was in school i didn't learn about atp it wasn't until i got to university that i learned about atp and it all sort of came together atp is called adenosine triphosphate um, and we use that for energy in our cells. There's a process of swapping ATP for ADP, which is adenosine triphosphate. Big words, I know, don't get too confused. It's just about that one little tiny phosphate molecule. Don't stress too much about it. We use the energy from glucose to create the energy that our body uses, which is that ATP one. You'll learn more about that later in, later in high school. Um, we're not going to worry about that yet. In photosynthesis, we use energy from the sun's, or sorry, the plants use energy from the sun's radiation to create that glucose. So that's the energy that they take in. So key concepts slash questions. So all cells need energy, energy to survive. What form of energy can cells use? So in animal cells, they use ATP. They use, they use the, yeah, they use ATP. Um, in plants, they use electromagnetic radiation or just radiation from the sun to create glucose. Um, respiration is how cells make energy. So what is cellular respiration? That's when we take oxygen and we take carbon uh, glucose and we produce carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis is how plants make food. What do the substances need for photosynthesis? I'll let you have a think about that. Quick wrap up. On Google Classroom, I've put up the pages from the Good Science textbook. Do those pages. I've put up what questions I want you to do. Um, make sure you're able to identify the components of photosynthesis and respiration. And then I have two videos there. The first one is a bit more of, a, of an advanced one. And the second one's a little bit more basic. 
um, choose whichever one you want. For you kids that are in the GAT class, I'd probably expect you to have a look at that one. I don't expect you to get it, but um, have a look at it. See if you can piece some stuff together. Everyone else, this one's really good too. Um, but yeah, we're going to leave it at that. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that's made sense. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.